Hey guys, so I wanted to make a video about the design and fabrication of my one pound ant weight combat robot, Blue Screen of Death. Um, I got interested in combat robots a few months ago. I started watching lots of videos and um, the uh, activity just seemed to um, blend a bunch of things that I really enjoyed doing. One was RC. I'd done RC and RC cars for many years. And um, I also like tools and making things. I have a shop. Uh, so uh, I like that angle. And then I also like the sort of design challenge. Uh, you know, can you design a, a vehicle to uh, achieve certain goals and withstand uh, lots of force uh, all within uh, some design constraints? And so uh, for those reasons, I got really interested in it. Um, as I said, I watched a lot of videos. There are some in particular I found very uh, helpful and inspiring. The first and foremost would be Robert Cohen. I'll link below. Um, if you're interested in combat robots or designing your own combat robot, I, I would highly encourage you to check out Robert's videos. He's got many, many videos that are very uh, thoughtful, considered, very helpful, and I, I found them very inspiring. So um, for those of you that know Robert's uh, robots, you'll see obvious similarities to his 30-pound crippling depression. And uh, absolutely, I sort of, you know, as the saying goes, good artists borrow, great artists steal. I definitely stole that uh, the, this sort of general um, theme or sort of concept for a robot. Uh, so absolutely give Robert uh, credit for that. Um, I will say, I think he himself was inspired to make crippling depression from other robots. Um, and also, you know, that's a 30 pound robot. This is a one pound robot. Um, outside of the similarities to a sort of a rounded rectangle with four, four wheels and an undercutter, the similarities pretty much stopped there. There were many uh, design challenges and, and, and things particular to this one pound version that were new and different and I was sort of figuring out as I went. So um, uh, anyway, Robert encourages people to copy him. He's very gracious with making, making his videos, I think, and taking the time to do so. Um, so at the end of the day, I think it's all good. Um, another series I found very helpful was NYC CNC. Uh, I use this project to learn Fusion 360 and to uh, CAM and modeling and also a CNC and John Saunders and his videos have been just really very helpful and very inspiring to for with all of those fusion CAM and the uh, CNC. So check his channel out. Um, uh, some caveats here. I am by no means a combat robot expert. I'm a total newbie making it up as I go and winging it. So, um, uh, uh, you know, I would say take everything I'm saying with uh, a few grains of salt. But um, anyway, let's, uh, let's dive in and check out Blue Screen of Death. Okay, so here's Blue Screen of Death. He's a little worse for wear after the uh, dark competition, but um, uh, he's, he's pretty compact. He's about 145 by 120 by 31 millimeters. Um, it's an undercutter design, so this uh, disc spins around and um, the wheels protrude above and below so he can uh, he can drive around in, in this configuration and then if he gets flipped over he can also drive around like that he's machined from a solid chunk of glass filled uhmw and um, yeah why don't i show you the uh, various components used uh, to make him so here are the components i had to machine to make blue screen there's a total of nine custom cnc parts and uh, six unique parts. Um, the first is the chassis. Um, this is machined again out of a UHMW, glass filled UHMW um, from both sides. Um, I spent quite a bit of time trying to bake as much as I could into this feature, in, into this part. So you'll see the uh, motors, the drive motor is actually held with um, in, inside these little pockets. Um, there's keying features down inside here that key into the motor um, and uh, yeah definitely a bit, fair bit of time trying to think through uh, how to fit fit everything into this um, this is the uh, cover plate also made from UHMW that gets bolted on the top um, there is a aluminum weapon disc that also has some uh, keying features that uh, key into the key into the motor um, I did have to make a modification to the motor I was using, so that, uh, that was another uh, sort of a customization. Um, there's some little hold-down plates, and lastly, this little uh, spacer ring 
to uh, to uh, fill in a gap between a bearing I was using and the uh, motor, but I'll talk about that later. So I'll open up a blue screen and we can check it out inside. Okay, so this is how blue screen looks when uh, it's ready to drive um, everything in place. Uh, the using a Bainbot wheels, Servo City motors, FingerTech Tiny ESCs, FingerTech power switch, Lemon RC receiver, and um, one of the things I was trying to focus on was making a uh, making it so the robot was still going at the end of the bout. So many times I'd see videos where a wheel or motor would get knocked out or damaged and then the robot would just sort of spin in circles. And um, so with this, each each wheel is powered by its own motor. And so theoretically, if you uh, if a wheel or a motor got damaged, then the other one would still be able to provide uh, motion on that side and you could still drive around. So some redundancy in the system. Also made these little hold down plates. So these um, these bolt right into the chassis and basically hold the uh, hold the motor down. There's um, a little set screw at the center there that pokes through, and then there's a corresponding divot in the uh, drive motor. And so when that's um, bolted down and screwed down, the uh, the motor uh, doesn't go anywhere. Here's the weapon side of the uh, chassis. You can see the big recess for the motor and then the pocket for the uh, weapon blade. It's also, if you look down in this, way down at the bottom there, there are little wedged features. Those are meant to key in to the uh, features on the motor I was using. And the idea there is that, um, you know, the the wedge features lock the motor in place so it's not able to be twisted around. And really the uh, screws, all the screws are doing are sort of holding the motor um, kind of up, but they're not prevent taking any shear forces and that's, those are all being taken by the chassis. So here's the weapon blade and uh, motor. Um, you'll see this interesting uh, uh, cutouts I've made here. Those are meant to key into the uh, the other end of the motor, the the actual outrunner, the, the the part that's spinning. And the idea here is that this just keys in. You can see it matches there, and this can't move at all. So these three tiny screws, they're only holding the motor, kind of pulling it against the plate, but they're not taking any shear loads. That's all the shear loads are being taken by the um, by the features in the pocket. So. Uh, um, that's what that's what's going on there so for obvious reasons I wanted to make the uh, weapon system as, as strong as possible this is an earlier prototype where the motor is keyed into the chassis here um, and it's an outrunner so this is spinning around you got your weapon and that would be spinning around but what happens you know when the blade hits something there's going to be forces you know on this motor and um, right now the motor is going to take all those forces and I don't think that's, you know, it didn't seem like that was going to be a very robust design. So um, <clears throat> I got an idea from a guy named Luke who has a robot called Rumham and um, the idea is basically putting a bearing, just a big bearing on the outside of your outrunner. Um, so I did have to machine this little spacer um, because I couldn't find a bearing that had the same diameter as my uh, motor. And then you do have to machine a little shelf into the uh, motor itself. But once you get those done, you get this nice big bearing. And um, you can see here, it uh, there are these three little screws that bolt right into the chassis and they hold the outer race of that big bearing down. Uh, so now when there's forces, radial forces on the, um, on the weapon blade, the bearing is taking the load. It's not the, not the motor itself. I went through a few iterations on the uh, chassis and I thought I'd show you a couple of the changes I made. Um, you'll see the this is an earlier version and it's all open in here, um, but the, the bottom of this is quite thin. Uh, you can see my fingers through there. It's only, I think, about a, a mil and a half thick. So what happened is this ends up getting very flexible and that didn't look too good. And then I <clears throat> also realized there were probably better ways to um, stiffen the the motor uh the weapon motor 
housing uh, even more. So this is a later version, and what I did is added this uh, rib uh, going all the way across, and that just totally stiffens the chassis up without adding uh, a lot of weight. And then for the motor, I just bridged these little sections, um, and that ends up, you know, locking the the uh, this whole uh, the weapon motor uh, support directly to uh, to these sections and just makes it a lot uh, a lot stiffer. For controlling blue screen, I went with a sort of tank style control method, where uh, my left stick would control the uh, left side of the vehicle and the right stick would control the right side. Um, I think other people do everything with one stick and they move it around, they use the other stick for their uh, weapon. But I wanted, I thought I'd have more control with uh, independent controls of each side. Um, and uh, to help with that, I ended up laser cutting these little discs with a slot and that constrains the movement because normally these sticks can go side to side and up and down and I just needed uh, up and down movement. So laser cut these discs and then I stole the uh, aileron channel and I drilled a little hole and made this little knob and uh, this is what I'm using for um, proportional control of the uh, of the weapon. So pretty much I would just, you know, start it up and then I would be uh, driving and if I really needed to I could come over here and adjust the uh, weapon speed. Okay, so that was a bit about the design and making of uh, Blue Screen of Death. Um, I did just get back from uh, Blue Screen's first competition. I went to the Dark, the Dallas area robot combat competition uh, just a week ago and um, all the time and effort I put into uh, making this, uh, it definitely paid off. Uh, Blue Screen got to the finals and um, uh, I have video footage of each of its fights. I think there were seven or eight uh, bouts against some other great robots and uh, those I think uh, should, should all be in my channel uh, so you can see how it did. And uh, as I said, it got to the finals. I won't spoil it now, but it, uh, there's, a, there's an exciting end uh, to the, to the uh, competition. Uh, I already have ideas for ways to improve blue screen and uh, we'll probably be uh, implementing those uh, uh, for the next competition. So thanks for watching. I hope you found it uh, interesting and maybe informative. Um, if you liked it, uh, give it a thumbs up and certainly uh, feel free to subscribe if you're interested in seeing uh, more videos. So thanks very much and see you next time. Cheers.